I want to hear you sing it without the instruments. Maybe the way you heard your mama sing it one time as she was churning butter or hanging up clothes or whatever they did back in the old time days. Precious memories how to get you crying before we start, doesn't he? With that song, I tell you what wonderful songs and what a wonderful way to open this service. It's so good to see you here this morning. All the mothers, happy Mother's Day. It's just a special national day of recognition for mothers, and I can't think of someone better to recognize than, than our mothers. Good to see a lot of people here. We have a lot of visitors here, a lot of family. I'm so glad you joined your family here today, but Brother Charles Moore, good to see you, brother, here today. And we missed him, Brother Ben Marshall. Ben fell there and uh, broke an arm and took a little spill there. And uh, looks like he just won a few rounds with Mike Tyson. But uh, he's here, good to see Ben here today. Good to see Linda Hudson. She'd had knee surgery replacement and she is back up walking good. And good to have her here. Good to see you here this morning. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I tell you, thank you for uh, the rain of a little bit of imposition there, but it's good to be here, isn't it? Randy Patton, will you come up? I want you to open us in prayer this morning if you do that. Brother Mark has some things he wants to share with you as prayer requests, and then Randy will lead us in prayer. It is so good to see each and every one of you here today. Pray for Alan Jackson. Alan uh, had surgery to remove kidney stones on Wednesday. He is still in the Northside Hospital, doing better but you continue to pray for him. They moved him to a cardiac unit and you pray for Alan Jackson. Pray for Donna Layton, if you would. We've been praying for her. We want to continue to do that. And then Gary Altieri's sister, Tiffany, she is, uh, has had a liver transplant about five years ago. There's beginning to be some problems with that and the team of doctors are trying to figure out what is the next step for her. So pray for her, if you would. And then uh, pray for the Carter's son-in-law, Rusty Walker, praying for him. Got some good news on potential treatment for his uh, cancer, but you pray for him. Pray for Dana Gard. Dana took a fall down in Savannah when they were there, and she has re-injured herself again from that. So pray for them. Laura Jones' stepmother in the hospital, praying for her. And um, then we had some praises this week. Uh, Carolyn, where are you back there, Carolyn? Had a praise with her and a co-worker for that. And then Randy, your nephew that we've been praying for, a praise uh, that he got some good news this week as well. So God is still continuing to work and answer prayers. You remember these folks on our prayer. Amen. As Randy comes, uh, you continue to pray for Allie Jones over here. We thought maybe she would get that baby with some giddy up and we would have a little baby here this morning, but he's here, he's here, and he's hearing all this wonderful music, uh, but you pray for her. She's very close uh, to delivery date. You have an unspoken request this morning. We do, Randy, brother, open us in prayer. Oh, it is good just to look around and see the families gathered here today. I wanted to just emphasize that we all just never take for granted our families each day that the Lord gives us with them, Lord, and just just thank the Lord for it and uh, enjoy your day with them today. Brother Charles, it is good to see you, brother. Every time I see him, he has this, he ministers to me when I see him. Um, last time he came in, he had this bright look about his face, and I said, man, I want some of what you have. He says, brother, it's available to everybody in the whole world, the Holy Spirit, and I just want to thank you, Charles. Um, it's good to be here today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, it is so good to be here today. We thank you for families. We thank you for mothers, Lord, the way they hold uh, the households together, the blessings they are to us. And I just want to thank you for this special day. 
thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, what he means to us, how that's why we're here gathered together today, Lord. We look around and see these families uh, gathered today, and I just want to share with everyone that we're here today to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, without him, we are miserable. We have nothing, but Lord, you hold everything together. You give us hope. You give us strength. You give us eternal life through the death of your son. We sing it to you today with our message and songs and in words. We thank you for the message we're about to hear. We thank you for your word of promises. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Randy. You may be seated this morning. If you notice these beautiful flowers down here, uh, if you would have uh, made a contribution to our teen ministry over the past number of weeks and had a flower placed here in memory or in honor of your mother, at the end of the service, make sure you come down here and get one. At the end of the service, every mother is going to receive a really beautiful bracelet we bought for you. And my wife and Kathy will be down here passing those out. Make sure as you do that, you grab one of these flowers if you would do that. Uh, before we uh, kind of show, Jim's got a video uh, uh, we want to show you. But before we do that, uh, special recognition for really two of our members. First being Gabe. Gabe, stand up over here, pal. He was in Carnegie Hall this last week. And there is Gabe standing right in the middle at Carnegie Hall. And what an honor that was, wasn't it, for him to be there and be able to sing. Now, when's he going to sing here? All right, Jerry's his manager. <laughs> it's going to be a little difficult then. Our treasurer, Bill Davis, we're in trouble. Uh, I know it's not Carnegie Hall up here, just make believe it is, Gabe, but what a tremendous honor for him. Now, uh, we had something else happen. Uh, how many people, I can't, imagine, I can't imagine I'm asking this in church, how many people watched the Kentucky Derby two weeks ago? And some people are there, they're afraid to raise their hand. <laughs> I watched it. Uh, there it was, go to the next picture. Uh, fifth place winner, there he was, the next one the third place winner, and then the next one, the second place winner. You know what they all had in common? Tory, stand up. All of their uniforms were made by Tory. In fact, the race that went before plus that one, she had 12 jockeys that were wearing all of the uniforms, all the things under the horse were made by Tori and her company. I thought, what a blessing that was. And so we knew that, so we were pulling. <laughs> we, were, we didn't wager any money, but we were watching TV pulling for her horses. I said, second, third, and fifth place, and there's Tori. Uh, I tell you what, it's an amazing thing. Uh, what you do, what you're always out there doing, uh, for the cause of Christ, that's for sure. Uh, Jim's got a video. Jim, if you can go ahead and dim the lights and show that, I'd appreciate it. Dear Mommy, you're the greatest. You're so pretty and smart, and you cook really good, too. I love it when you cuddle with me, read me stories, and kiss me goodnight. I like that a lot. Jesus gave me the best mommy in the world. I love you so, so much. much. And I didn't realize how much I'd miss you. Thanks for the money. You'd be proud. I got a great deal on a new outfit. I can shop like you, but I definitely can't cook like you. Anyway, I really miss you, Mom. I know raising me hasn't always been easy. And I don't always say it. But I'm so, so thankful. thankful for you, Mom. I don't know how I'd make it through without you. Just having you to call and listen when I need to vent helps me more than you know. Was life this complicated when I was growing up? I know you had your own struggles, but you always seem to have a handle on things. That's why I need your grounding, and I thank God for you, Mom. You've shown me so much. I'm in awe of you. Not a day goes by that I am not grateful for you and for all that you've taught me. Do you realize what a wonderful legacy you have? I see so much of you in the kids and in their kids. And now a whole new generation is being built 
on the foundation of your incredible love. I love you so much. Well, I hope if you are able uh, to get in touch with your mother today, if she's not here with you right now in the service, you'll take the time to do that. Please, please do not allow the day to go by. Uh, I have to assume there'll be a day you wish you could if you have not already. So please, please do that. Tori, maybe a 42 regular, something with a gray tweed, please, if you don't mind. I, uh, I've been needing a new one, and so I would certainly appreciate it. That was amazing. That was amazing. Congratulations to you for that. Well, we're just going to recognize a couple of things. Not going to do a big lengthy uh, time right now, but we would like for all of our mothers to stand. We want to say thank you. We want to honor you. So all the mothers, members or not, uh, but all of the mothers that are in the building. And I think they deserve a tremendous round of applause. Absolutely. So thank you so much for your influence. And uh, then I want to do this, and just, just this. We are blessed here at this church. The church has been in existence since 1871. We are blessed with tremendous legacy here. And so I want to ask all of the ladies to stand. That have, And I'm not going to go beyond this, so you, you got the one shot here, okay? that have walked with the Lord for over 40 years. I just want you to, to, to see the impact over 40 years. And you look around you, and that is the reason that this church remains solid and going and steady for now almost 150 years are the prayers of the saints that have traveled. And so ladies, I want to say as a dad uh, who raised two boys here, thank you. Thank you for the impact that you've had on me personally, on my wife, and the raising of our children. And I think every mom and dad that are in this room could say the same thing. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. It always just grips my heart to see how many of our ladies have been walking with the Lord for that long. I tell you, what a, what a tremendous blessing. Kathy's going to come and sing. I have no doubt that Tori could not make a great-looking suit. I don't want it with checks and everything else like those jockeys. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, the talent our church has, the talent our ladies have, I tell you. I, you wanted yours first. I tell you, this is one time I'll let you get it first, all right? <laughs> I want you to make him a hat like you made for those jockeys, too. I think he'd look good in that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what, what, what a blessing and uh, to see all of you ladies here this morning. And uh, Kathy's going to sing a wonderful, wonderful song. Then uh, I'll deliver a message for you, Kathy. Ch 
children the Lord said he would be it doesn't take very many it can be just two or three and I felt that same sweet spirit that I felt of times before Surely I can say I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. of angels' wings, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There's a holy hush around us as God's glory this place I've touched the hem of his garment I can almost see his face and my heart is overflowing with the fullness of his love I know of angels' wings, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. beautiful song, what a wonderful message in a song, and uh, thank you so much, Kathy. I can't imagine anyone else singing that any better, and with a better spirit than what Kathy has, and so thank you so much. Why don't you stand, and we'll have a word of prayer. We, we have a We Church program. If you're a visitor here and you have children pre-kindergarten, uh, we have a program for them. If you'd like to take them to the foyer, we'll get them next door, and uh, they'll be in Fort Faith over there, uh, and... Uh, They'll have a wonderful time this morning, and make sure you pick them back up uh, after you get your rose and all of your thing. Get your gift this morning, moms, but they'll be well taken care of this morning. It's so good to see you here. Thank you, visitors, for coming and to honoring your mother here today and being with her on this special occasion. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we know you are here with us, and you are truly the honored guest here. Father, this is your place. This is your house. And Lord, I am so thankful that you're here with us. Where two or three of us are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. So Father, we're honored and humbled by that thought and that promise. Lord, I thank you for this very special day to where we could recognize and honor mothers. Father, you did so from the cross with a short time left to live as you saw to the needs of your own mother. So, Father, we're not hesitant today to lift up mothers, and uh, we know what a tremendous impact they've had on all of our lives. And so, Father, we pray we can do that this morning. But, Father, while we do that, the whole purpose is to lift our eyes to you. 
So, Father, we just ask and pray this morning that our hearts would be settled, they'd be open this morning. You would allow the Word of God, which you've given to us, to penetrate our hearts, our minds, and our spirit. And, Father, we'd be encouraged by what we hear this morning. Father, it's a privilege to stand here this morning, and I thank you for it. Father, use me for your honor and glory, and I will praise you eternally for it, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. It is truly a wonderful day of recognition that our nation has set aside today to recognize mothers. And I've titled this message, Mother's Love. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit because I'm going to use a verse of Scripture I've really never used before to preach from on Mother's Day. But what's interesting about it, you see two heads, but kind of on that side you'll see some other feet and legs under there. There's more than two birds or two chicks under that hen. And I'm going to use that this morning as we talk about a mother's love. It was 105 years ago that President Woodrow Wilson made it an official national holiday, Mother's Day. And so moms, this is just for you, a national holiday just for you. I personally believe it's the most important title a woman can receive, and that is to be called mother. So ladies, I trust you wear that title proudly. It was Charles Wesley who said, I learned more from my mother about God than I did from all of the theologians in England. And it's all because he had watched and listened to his mother growing up. The evangelist Billy Sunday said, There is nothing in the world of art that compares to the beautiful songs that my mother used to sing to me. Brother Jerry talked about the song Precious Memories and he said, Maybe you heard your mother sing that to you. How many people here today remember your mothers when you were a young child singing to you? Man, I do. My mother had this southern hillbilly voice out of the hills of Asheville, North Carolina, and she would sing to my brother and I. Abraham Lincoln said, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have clung to me my entire life. Mothers, there may not be a more important memory that you will ever place in your child's mind than a memory of them listening and hearing you pray. It was in 1922, just a few weeks after John Vaughn's mother had passed away, and he was back for his mother's funeral, and he was standing in the small house that he had grown up in. And in the quietness of that home, as he stood there by himself, he remembered hearing all of his mother's prayers as a young boy when he was growing up and her voice kind of bouncing off to the walls and the wood floor in that small house. And three days later, he sat down and he put all of that in a lyric and put music to it. And it's now part of our National Registry of Songs, If I Could Hear My Mother Pray Again. Of course, as if I could only hear my mother pray again, if I could only hear her tender voice as then, So happy I would be would mean so much to me if I could hear my mother pray again. What a wonderful thought. Well, being a mother, ladies, it's an amazing job that lasts for a lifetime. Lasts for a lifetime. Did you know a mother never retires? If you thought there was going to come a time where you retire, that never seems to happen. Your duties may change, But you're always on call, aren't you? And ready to respond. And think about everything that you've learned from raising children. One mother had taken her young son shopping with her one day. And uh, as she finished going through her last store, the clerk there where she was checking out gave a lollipop to her young son. And she looked at her son, what do you say back to the gentleman? And he said, charge it. It's amazing what our children learn from us, isn't it, and what we learn from our children. A young mother was taking the pastor's wife home one day. You've got to be careful when you do this. And on the way there, she had her five-year-old in his car seat in the back, and her son blurted out, says, Mom, are there any stupid idiots on the road today? 
<laughs> Scripture says your sins will find you out, right? Usually through your children if you're not careful. What they may say, what they may bring up to someone else. I want to start by reading a few verses of Scripture out of Romans, uh, the first chapter, verses 18 through 20 today. Then I'm going to really be in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, for the bulk of my message today. Scripture here says, For the wrath of God. God is a God of love, patience, long-suffering, but He's also a God of wrath. It says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the truth, but they'd rather live this unrighteous life. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. How did he show it? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The unrighteous that choose to live that way are going to be without an excuse because if they just look at God's creation, they'll see him in it. They'll see him in it. I wonder how often or how much time we take to slow our life down to pay attention maybe to put away our cell phones, and to look at everything around us that God has created. And when you do that, you'll see the Creator. Throughout the Word of God is very interesting. The Word that became flesh, Jesus Christ, allowed parts of His creation to act as symbols in order to help us fully understand the divine lessons being taught to us from the Word of God. Many biblical teaching moments deal with sheep, with wolves, with vineyards, with fishing, with wheat, with shafts, with goat, with snakes and vipers, eagles, fowls of the air, and even chickens. All used in order to help us better understand the biblical concept that is being expressed to us. So if you want to go back to Matthew, the 23rd chapter, I'm going to use this verse I've never used before on a Mother's Day message. I'm going to read really beginning in verse 27 and 33, and then I'm going to focus on verse 37. I'll use these to set up. Jesus here was not far away from being falsely accused and crucified. He's near the temple, and he has been admonishing through a tongue lashing the religious leaders. Verse 27, he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. There's there's a danger there, isn't it? Our Lord sees inside. A lot of times we just see the external, and people think if I can impress someone enough with how I look, they'll maybe receive me as someone righteous, when inside they're full of all uncleanness. You appear one way, but God knows. He says those kind of people are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. He begins again, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Here's why, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garner the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Yeah. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. Then he really gives them some sensitive preaching here, doesn't he? He says, you serpents, you generation of vipers. Now get this piercing question. How can you escape the damnation of hell? It's not my message, but let me give you some insight here. There's a lot of churches today that don't preach hell, that don't believe there's a hell. There is. There is. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Jesus, as we just read, had given his disciples and anyone else listening this scathing tongue lashing, really directed at the 
Jewish religious leaders. Eight times in this chapter, he uses the word woe. That's a very strong language. We just read he called them snakes and vipers. Then he asked, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Then down in verse 33, we get a tremendous display of our Lord's compassion, His mercy and grace, His long-suffering. And look down there in verse 37, if you will. He goes through all of that against the scribes and Pharisees, and he gets down and he says, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, thou that kills the prophets and stones them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and you would not. A mother's love. Remember that picture at the beginning? There was the hen with her chicks under her protective wings. It's a remarkable teaching when you think about it that our Lord uses. Do you remember when he was teaching people one day about stress and worry, he said, consider the birds of the air, if you remember that. He said, they don't have the ability to plant or to reap crops, yet your heavenly Father knows their needs and he takes care of them. The common person understood that when he referred that teaching to the birds of the air. When people were worried about having clothes to wear, he said, have you looked at the lilies? They don't work, they don't toil, they don't spin, and look how I've clothed them. Won't I be able to take care of you? It's amazing the things that he can use that allows us to make sense and understand his teaching. But here he gives us a picture of his love and his security and safety, his protection and his ultimate, ultimate desire for mankind, and he is using a chicken as the focus of the teaching method. Isn't it amazing? I wish I could have gathered you as she gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. You know, God created within a hen the strong desire to love, to care, to nurture, to protect her chicks to the point she will give her own life. Now that desire was not acquired over millions and millions of years. That was placed in the hen when God created them. The mother hen will allow her chicks to move away a brief distance from her, but never too far. She's at attention at all times, watching out for hawks, other predators that may come to take away or damage or hurt her chicks. If she notices danger, she uses a very special clucking sound, which tells her chicks that there's danger approaching, and upon hearing their mother's voice, the chicks run for safety under the wings of of the mother hen. And then they are wrapped closely to her heart and her bosom for safety and protection. I want you to get that picture this morning. And they stay there until mother says it's okay and she lifts her wings and lets them go back out. It's in Psalms, the 91st chapter, verse 3 and 4. It says, Surely he, our Heavenly Father, shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler under his wings. I want you to know today that mothers never stop standing guard, do they? They never do. Mothers never stop looking out for the safety and the well-being of their children, I don't care how old you are. They always do that, don't they? And you know, God gives mothers tremendous wisdom and sensitivity in knowing the people and the places and the things which could cause harm to their children, and they've given them the ability to warn their children about that. 
when they could sense their child moving in a direction with a person that that person may not be right for them, listen to your mother. When she tells you, I don't think you ought to be going to that place, please listen to your mother. Know her voice, hear it, and obey it. And when I was growing up, my mother warned me about hanging around with certain people. She saw something in their character or that wasn't in their character that she didn't like. She saw certain places that other people were going that she saw as potential pitfalls for me if I were to go there that I had no business going into. And as much as I hated to to admit it, Mom was right every time. She was right every time. The people that she didn't know but only saw from a distance, she called their character, lack of it, correct. Those were not the people I need to be around. She knew the type of places that I didn't need to be going to. She knew when I needed to be home at night. For visitors here, my father passed away when I was nine years old, so my mother raised my brother and I. But my mom, as we got older and driving, she would say, Now, I understand I want you home by midnight. Why? Because nothing good happens after midnight. And that was all the explaining she was going to do. And you know what? She was awake. <laughs> she was awake, wait, and this is before cell phones or text. Mom was hung in a train or something here. No, no, no. The light was on and mom was awake, waiting for us to come home. Nothing good happens after 12 o'clock. You know what? That's still good advice if you're single. What are you doing out that time? What's going on? Who's out? I look at some of these crazy athletes who all of a sudden you read about what happened to them at 2.30 in the morning at a particular spot. Well, what were you doing there? What did you think was going to happen to you there? Well, Mama's advice is still good advice. And she was right all of the time. When the hen sensed danger approaching, she did not run towards the chicks. She stayed in a place and made her sound, that was the warning, and they came to mother. And she covered them. My mother never cared how old I was, how successful I may have become, or how smart I thought I was. She would always say, don't forget I'm still your mother. And you're going to have to listen to what I tell you. So I would listen to mom talk, and you know what? I would give anything to hear that again. Anything to have her sitting in my car talking about life, about things that happened in our home, some of the things I had been unaware of, and me listening to the wisdom of my mother I would give anything to hear that again. She was always right. Jesus said in John, the 10th chapter, verse 27 and 28, He said, My sheep, if you're a blood-bought Christian follower of Jesus Christ, you're referred to as a sheep in the Scriptures. If you are impersonating a Christian, you're really not a Christian, but you like hanging around church and Christian people, you're a goat. All right? I may not be able to tell the difference, but Jesus will, and one day he will separate the sheep from the goats. He said, Here are my sheep, hear my voice. I know them, and here's what sheep do. What do they do? They follow. They follow him. And he says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Do you know the voice of the Savior today? Do you listen to it? Do you follow it? Are you willing to obey it today? When the chicks ran to their mother, you know what she did? She always opened her wings. She always opened her wings, then covered them with her protection. Isn't that just like mom? Isn't that just like your mother? Mothers have that God-given nature to make pain go away. It's an unusual ability they have. 
When you've been hurt, the hugs and kisses from your mother are better than any medicine you would ever receive. We were in North Carolina a couple of years after my dad passed away visiting our relatives and that, and I was helping one of my uncles mow grass around his property, and uh, he had a bunch of high grass and weeds and things, and I was trying to get my stuff. And because of the mower, uh, I, I thought he was saying mow the weeds. And he was telling me to stay out of the weeds because there was a hornet's nest there. Well, I found the hornet's nest, okay? And I also found out that they, were, they could fly a lot faster than I could run. And so I got a little ill that evening, and we were about 20 miles away where mom, mom was staying with a sister, and we were at another relative's house. And all I wanted was mom that night. So they finally put me in the car and drove me to mom's sister's house where mom was at. And I can only tell you, when mother hugged me and said, honey, how are you, and kissed on me, all of that pain went away. Now, mothers, you have a special God-given ability to do that. When you fail or you do something really stupid, there's mom, arms wide open, isn't she? Right there, ready to receive you. When you've been hurt with the words of other people, your mother will encourage you. When no one else seems to want to listen to you or understand, mothers will sit patiently for as long as you want them to while you pour your heart out to them. That's what mothers do. When I was hurt, I wanted mom. When I was discouraged, and that happened a lot, people underestimating what you thought you were capable of doing. Mom always had the right words to encourage me to keep me going, make sure I wasn't going to quit. When I was uncertain, Mom would be able to give me direction. When I was facing important decisions in my life and I could call Mom, she would say, I'll pray that God will give you the wisdom. She always had the right things to say. That's what mothers do. When it came time for me to leave home, because I now had a wife, she hugged me and kissed me. She was going to be alone. I knew that. She told me how proud she was of me. And then she said, but, don't re but remember, I'll always be your mother. <laughs> I will always be your mother. Wow. I traveled a lot for many, many years, and I called mom almost every day. Every day. Cindy did it to her mother, too. Well, when you're traveling out of the country with the time zones, it's hard. And I bought mom a globe she could keep at her house. And I would call mom and she'd say, where are you at? And I'd say, well, I'm here. And she'd go, well, let me go look. Where do I find it? And I would tell her to look. And then she'd go, oh, Lord, how did you get there? <laughs> First question I'm about, oh, Lord, how did you get there? Well, mom, I flew here. That's how, how are you going to get home? How was sending the girls? What are you doing away from them? Now I'm going to worry until you get back home, she'd say. That was the phone call all the time. That's what mothers do, isn't it? The painful thing about Matthew 23, 37 is that the Lord's desire to save and protect was not stronger than the people's desire to want to stay lost. He said, how often would I have gathered you? That was my desire. I wanted to bring you under the protection of my wings. And you would not. And you would not. You wouldn't do it. It's probably nothing worse than when we talk maybe to a parent. And they have children that are heading in a direction that they know there's a cliff there. And mom and dad are doing everything to give godly counsel to their child. And instead of listening to the voice of their parents, obeying them, headstrong, head in this direction. It's a painful counseling session, isn't it? My mother constantly worried about my sister. I mentioned her a week ago. Her family and her situation the constant pain and trauma that was going on within their home. 
But mom recognized there was not much she could do other than to pray for them. Be there when my sister needed to come to the house and literally cry on mom's shoulder, pour out her heart, and then allow mom to give her godly motherly wisdom. It's an amazing thing. Ladies, mothers, God has instilled in you something that he hasn't in anyone else. The abilities he's given you to really take care of the hurt and the pain, the disappointment in someone's life. You've got a special gift that God gave you. Mothers are amazing. You may remember this news story. It happened kind of in my hometown. It was 30 years ago. But a Northwest Airlines flight heading to Phoenix in 1987 crashed just after takeoff at the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. There were 155 passengers on board. 154 were killed, including two on the ground. There was one survivor, a four-year-old girl by the name of Cecilia Crocker. That's her and her family. Her mother and father and brother were killed in that crash. She survived. This was her years, picture of her years later. What happened after takeoff, all of a sudden the pilots recognized there was a fatal problem with the aircraft. The word went out through the aircraft because they got it from the black box when they recovered that. Please position yourselves for a crash. Her mother unbuckled her seatbelt got her daughter wrapped in her arms, and that's how the plane went down. Her mother gave her life, and she kept hers. Isn't that just like a mother? Not a mother in here that would not give your life for your children. You wouldn't think twice about it. it would, you wouldn't have to say, let me think about that. The love a mother has for her children is amazing. Well, that's your mom, but to everyone listening today, that's also your Savior. That's also your Savior. That's why he chose to use a chicken, a hen, as the focal point of this story to get this unbelievable concept across. That's what the Savior does for us. He wraps us. His arms are open. It's not His will that anyone should perish. That means go to that awful place, hell, that Jesus talked about. But that all should come to know Him. However, people every day turn their back on Him and head their own direction. That's not His desire. And he'll, His arms are open wide when you come to Him, and He'll wrap those around you and keep you eternally secure until you lift your eyes in heaven. That's His promise. Mothers, you have an ability to do something that no one else can do. This is, let me get finished with this. It was nine years ago, and Sunday morning like this, preached the message, and we had visitors in that service like we have today. Cindy and I and Mark and Kathy always try to get to the doors as we shake your hands on the way out. So, uh, you know, we'd love to see you uh, and shake your hand and thank you for coming. There was a kind of a middle-aged man here that morning, and I had never seen him before. And on the way out, sometimes visitors will kind of sneak by us. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but he waited, and he told me his name, and he said, I need to talk to you. And there was a sense of urgency in his voice. So I said, can you come by the church tomorrow on Monday? He said, I'll be there. I met him at 10 o'clock, and we were in this classroom right back here. And he said, I was raised in a Christian home. My dad deserted the family, but my mom raised my sister and myself. She always took us to church. She always read her Bible. She always prayed with us. We always heard her praying. And she, he said, my mom is ill. I don't think she's going to live. And every day I have to drive by this church two times. And I finally said, I'm going to come in here and I need to talk to somebody. I said, Gary, you're under conviction. And I've shared Jesus Christ with him. The same thing that his mother had been sharing with him for most of his life. And this man who worked in the oil business, Gary Fuller, back there, 
in the midst of shedding tears and trying to catch enough breath to talk and to pray, on our knees together, he asked Jesus Christ to save him. Some may remember, maybe you don't. On the Sunday I baptized Gary, his ailing mother and sister were here to watch that. Mothers, don't give up. Don't give up. Well, my child is this. Don't give up. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Mothers, don't give up. God has instilled in you a respect that your children have for you. They have for no one else. Don't give up. What a tremendous privilege you have today, ladies, to be called a mother. And again, it was our Lord as he was on the cross, took time to look down and said, I need to take care of mom. He looked at John and said, John, your responsibility. I want you to stand this morning. For a lot of people, it's difficult. I'm one of those because my mother is not here. She is in heaven. My wife's mother, she's in heaven. My dad, my father-in-law. And as Mark said earlier, boy, wouldn't we give anything for those of us that have parents now with our Savior to just have another opportunity to sit and talk with them. My dad only got to see me play one sporting event in my life before he passed away. I was playing Little League Baseball. And my dad had uh, uh, made it to the St. Louis Cardinals uh, training camp and all of that as a pitcher. And so my brother and I wanted to be like dad and play baseball. And he always worked and he could never come to a game. And he was able to come to one game that took place one summer on a Saturday. I'll never forget it. He, he worked on Saturdays. He would get home about 1 o'clock, so he worked half day Saturday. But the game had already started, and I remember seeing Dad's car drive up and park. Cindy's been to the school back there, Evergreen Elementary School, and had a baseball field back there. And I was the second hitter up. And I was so nervous because Dad was there watching me, and I wanted to do good for Dad. Mom was there. She'd been in her chair cheering the whole game I got a triple I'll never forget standing on third base and hearing my dad say good job son good job son three words that I've carried with me for 64 years listen parents you have an eternal impact on your children and if you're here today and you know that's what your mom did for you you ought to, if she's still here today, you ought to grab her by the neck and say, Mom, thank you for being my mother. Those words will mean more to her than anything else. You ought to thank God every day for your parents, for your mother. We're going to give an invitation. This is, I know, unusual service on Mother's Day. Someone may want to come and pray. Someone may kind of, you may want to bring your mother and pray with her or pray for her. I don't know. Moms, you may want to pray for a child. I have no idea. People may want to become part of this church. That would be fantastic. We're always going to give an invitation and uh, give you a chance to respond. Father, Lord, I am so grateful and thankful for the family that I grew up in, the place, the home you placed me in, Lord. What a remarkable place. What a remarkable mother and father. But, Lord, I thank you for the diligence and Christian example that my mom was to my brother and I her entire life. Lord, there's no doubt I'm the man that I am today because of what she instilled in me. I am so thankful for that. Lord, I know where she's at. She's with you. And Father, I can't wait to see her again. Father, I don't know what's on the hearts of these people here today. But Father, I ask and pray if your Holy Spirit has been moving and speaking to a heart that, Father, they would want to do business with you today before leaving here. So, Father, I give this invitation to you and all the honor and glory of it, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Sing a verse of this song. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart.
you, Brother Mark, is going to come. I'm going to baptize Juliana this morning, Brown. I'm looking forward to that. Before I do that, I, I've got to kind of spill the beans to you, okay? Uh, and I, there's no easy way to do this. Uh, Brother Mark, you know, received his doctorate, and we are so excited about that. Next Sunday is our graduate Sunday, and we'll be recognized all of our graduates Sunday morning. But Sunday night, we're going to do something special. We're going to go down to the gymnasium after the service, and we're going to feed the church and anyone who's here, and we're going to have a special time of recognition for Brother Mark and Kathy. It's a huge accomplishment. It's a huge accomplishment. We want to recognize that. So we're going to do that next Sunday night. But we're going to need some help Wednesday night to set tables up and chairs and things like that, okay? So if you're here Wednesday night, if you can get down there and help us do that. Also, my wife is going to need to meet with the deacon's wives after the service this morning. Just kind of meet down here if you'll do that. And uh, so that she can kind of get some help. She's already taken care of most of the things. But uh, we've got our two grandsons en route right now to... Uh, Atlanta. I haven't seen Kevin and Luke since December, and Holly and Joy have been in Lynchburg, Virginia. They're driving back, and they, they snagged the two boys for us. So, so uh, she's excited about that. We'll have them here this week, so she'll need to do some help, your help with some other things. Okay, so, but uh, there's no way to get all that done without him finding out about it. And so uh, if you weren't going to be here next Sunday night, make sure you're here. We'll have a great time. Uh, in the service, then go down to the gymnasium, all right? It's you. All right, thank you very much. That was a surprise to me right there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that and uh, hope that we all have a great time with that. I know we will next Sunday evening, so thank you again. Gentlemen, if you'll come forward, we'll be ready to take the offering in just a moment. There's no service tonight. Bible study Wednesday night, 645, choir practice at seven o'clock on Wednesday night. Pastor's already mentioned it, but next Sunday is Graduates Sunday. Appreciate the work that people have done on that. Today, we got a lot of stuff going on at the end of the service, so uh, you're gonna have to get to these places rather quickly. All of the mothers come down, get the bracelets here in the front. Uh, Pastor mentioned the deacon's wives, also Silvana, Sylvania, excuse me, Islas needs to meet with anyone who can volunteer to help in VBS right after the service down here by the piano. So here's the plan, okay? Deacons, wives, get your instructions, grab your bracelet, get over here, make the rest of you get over and get your bracelet, get over here. Because uh, she needs a list of who's going to be able to help. VBS is coming quick. It's always a great week. So, Vanya, you do such an amazing job with that. But she does need to help. So if you can help with that, see her. She promises no longer than five minutes. Next week after the service, um, after the morning service, the youth leaders want to meet with those parents of those that are attending camp so they can get the transportation details and all out to you. Camp is coming up uh, June the 3rd, I want to think, is the date for that, June 3rd through the 7th. It'll be a great, great time. Tom, lead us in prayer for the offering.
warm, isn't it? Yeah. You got a lobster, we'll get that thing ready for lunch. <laughs> This is Juliana Brown, isn't she a sweetie? Amen. I tell you what, it's been a privilege. She's baptizing her brother, I think. Brian, too. Yeah, baptized brother and, and dad at the same time. Now the daughter. Amen. And she received Christ as her Savior. She knows it. She's confident of it. And she wanted to follow the Lord in baptism. So this is just fantastic. Juliana, on your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death, Amen. and raised to walk in the of the Lord. Why don't you stand with us? Now, my wife, uh, Kathy's going to be down there. Cindy's going to help uh, Juliana here. Oh, she'll be down in a minute. But to all the ladies, make sure if you bought one of these roses, you come down and get that. There's a really nice bracelet for every mother that's here today, okay? Uh, no evening service tonight, by the way, Mark told you. Okay, we're going to have a dismissal, Brother Jerry? All right. God is good. Okay. God is good. God is good. I have tasted of the Lord, and God is good. God is good.